Hey Mini Enthusiasts, how are you doing? Welcome back, I hope you're all well and I hope you're having a great day. I bet you didn't expect to see Project Kit, did you? That's not going to be featured in today's video, but it is up and coming soon. So I might have mentioned before, I'm going to be converting Project Kit from a 1275 SPI automatic to a Swift Tune 1380cc car bretted car. So we're going to be doing that build series coming up very soon. I'll go through the conversion process and what we're going to do. However, in today's video, I'm working on the back end of Project Bruce and there is a hell of a lot to do on there. This is only the first episode in that series, but it gets quite involved. As you might have guessed, I'm actually a few weeks ahead of the videos going out at the moment. That is because I've been non-stop working on Project Bruce. And actually, as it stands at the moment, I am working full time on Project Bruce, Monday to Friday. So the plan is, it's booked in at Bingley Hall Mini Fair on the 13th of March. It will be in the hall at Bingley, Mini, Bingley Hall Mini Fair. And if all goes to plan, I should be handing it over to the new owner. Now, for me, that's a 200 mile journey. As we speak today, I still need to spray the car. I still need to put it all back together. I still need to get it MOT'd. Um, I still need to make sure that head gasket is okay. So there's a, a lot to do in the next few weeks for me. Um, but if you are going to Bingley Hall Mini Fair or planning to go, look out for me, look out for the car and we should be there. So I hope you enjoy today's video. It's quite a long one and uh, be back again soon. Cheers. Right, so next job is we're gonna be removing the subframe out the back of the car. I need to have a look, see what condition the subframe's in. I can see it's been patched. I need to, I've struggled to find a good replacement secondhand subframe. Everyone I see on eBay has already been patched or is already really corroded or is already bent. Uh, aside from buying a new one, I think I need to see what this subframe's like first. So, in this video, I think I'll try and take you through step by step how to do it. Because I know a lot of people are watching this, these videos at the moment because they're doing similar things on their car. So I'll take through the best I can uh, each step along the way. So the first thing I've done at the moment is just to get the car up on some ramps. We've got the wheels chocked at the front so it can't roll forward. Uh, and the first thing to do in the boot is disconnect the positive battery cable and um, you can push it down throughout through through the hole you've not got to take the cable completely out although i have done on this car because the cable was in a really bad condition but you need to take the cable off poke it through the hole in the boot disconnect it from the subframe so it's held on with a couple of clips pull the battery cable completely out of the way uh, and as you can see, I've taken the battery out of here just purely because one, it's not in the way, two, it reduces a bit of weight. The next thing we need to do is disconnect the handbrake cable. So that's pretty straightforward. Again, because I've got the carpets out, so we need to take this uh, plate off here, which is just a seal, disconnect the cable from the handbrake mechanism, and then I can get underneath and pull that out of the way. Right, so that's the handbrake cable removed. Uh, now we've just got to get the metal brake pipe off because it goes up over the top of the subframe here and it's connected here. So this is probably original oil or it's been replaced properly in the past because people tend to root them underneath when they've replaced them. The good news with this is, well I say good news, I've damaged the brake pipe already. So I'm gonna be putting a new front to rear metal brake pipe on. Uh, that's if I can get this one off. I don't, it's uh, pretty tight. There we go. 
go. We'll put a bit of WD-40 on that, I think, or a bit of duck oil. I always get picked up on that in the comments because I always just by default say WD-40. What I mean is a bit of penetrating fluid. We could just cut this metal pipe because it's getting replaced anyway, isn't it? But let's take it off properly. Bits of uh, mechanical sympathy. So there we go. Look away now if you're an arachnophobic. Look at the size of this flipping spider. He's huge. I'm glad he's dead. So fuel tank next. First thing we want to do is take the fuel cap off because you can't get the tank out with the fuel cap on. Then we need to clamp off the fuel hose down at the bottom here making sure not to damage it, of course. Um, then, fuel tank sender unit, just unplug that, pretty straightforward. And then we need to take the securing strap off the tank. Get that strap out of the way. And then it is just a case of giving it a wiggle. We don't have to be too careful in here because the boot floor is horrible anyway, but if you've got a nicely painted boot floor, you might want to put a towel or something underneath to stop it scratching. So, and then we need to go back underneath and disconnect the fuel hose from the fuel line at the bottom and pull it through the underneath. It's clamped off now, so it's not gonna leak. Right, I'm not faking this up. I just thought I'd... Uh... I'll just start to get this clip off down the bottom here because it's going to be rusty as anything. And uh, yes, it's not doing much that clip. Just capture any excess, that's just the fuel leaking out the hose. So now we've got the hose off, uh, take the clip off the end. And now we should be able to pull the tank out and pull the hose through the hole in the floor at the same time. So now we've got the fuel hose off down the bottom. We should be able to just pull the tank forward, pull the hose through the hole. So just to be on the safe side, because these mole grips, if you leave them on there for a long time, they could damage that hose. So just wind a long bolt into the end to plug up the hole make sure it does plug it up as well and if you can tie it up or keep it above the level in the tank so it's not going to leak out on you prior to removing the subframe one thing i need to do is just check and see if we've got any play in these rear radius arms give them a good tug left and right and up and down also it allows us to check the wheel bearing as well that noise is the brakes rubbing but we're off to a good start. That radius arm is solid. So I don't think we're gonna have to ream it. I may just take the pin out when it's all apart and just make sure the pin is clean and not corroded. But we're good that side. Let's go around and check the other side. Right, this side. I know it's too good to be true. This side's got a bit of play. Let me show you. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. Let's try again. So we're going to give it a shake. And we'll go left and right. You can just see it moving. Not a huge amount of movement. And we'll go up and down. A bit more on the up and down. You can see it. Just watch here. So that wants a radius arm refurb on this side. Next up, we need to remove the shock absorbers. It's probably easier said than done when you've got a little buzz gun lock I've got here. So you might have to hold the outside of the shock absorber. And the other side. When it starts spinning like that, 
we just got to hold the outside of the shock absorber from under the wheel arch. The next bit I'm going to do is make a little scape for the body to move around on. Now, what we want to do is we'll be supporting the back end of the car with no subframe or anything like that on. So it's um, not particularly heavy once you take all the subframe out, but I do want to distribute the weight over quite a large area. Otherwise, if we just put that in the middle of the floor, it could dent up the floor and especially we will be taking out a bit of a hill board. So what I do, I've done this before, is I just get a big bit of wood I've marked it on here, we'll roughly centrally locate it and we'll screw that down um, and that will spread the load over a wider area. That now gives us a nice little body scape we can use for resting the body on and moving it around when it's got no subframe in the back. Now what we're going to do is get the rear wheels off. We're going to lower down and we're going to not let the scape completely take the weight of the body uh, just yet, but we'll get it so it's resting on it and sharing the weight with the jack. Let's just get the rear wheels off first. Now we've, got, we've got the shocks out now, so obviously it's going to go much, much higher. Go back under now and just reposition. Make sure we're in a good position. Uh, don't worry about the axle stand. If it's going to drop down, it will drop down on the little skate now. So there we go. We're not going to put all the weight on it yet because now uh, we need to loosen in fact we can put all the weight on it now we need to loosen the subframe there we go and we will then be lifting the body off the subframe So now we've just got to go round and undo our four subframe mountings. Right, these heel ball bolts have already been checked and loosened, so I've not got to worry about buzzing them off. But you wouldn't usually just buzz them out like this because they're liable to snap. Go round and do the other side. Now we're back inside. We need to get these rear subframe bolts and there'll be a nut underneath. Let's get the big guns on it. to the other side and although the brake drums are on the floor they're taking some of the weight I've just put the jack underneath the subframe before we take the final bolt out because it might drop down bit of wiggling and a bit of wobbling and we should have the subframe out. We can now put our jack back underneath the trolley.
Now, we will just get an axle stand under there as well, just to double up for the jack for a bit of safety. Now that's resting on the axle stand, we can use the jack to assist us to get the subframe out. And there we go. Right, so there is the rear subframe out. What I'm about to show you though is just absolutely unbelievable. I, I can't believe this. This is a 40 year old Mini and on the face of it, it just looked like a wreck. Look at the inside of this rear wheel arch now I've just gone away and I've cleaned up a bit of the undersill that was on there. That is original paint. Now, it is absolutely caked in this undersill everywhere. When I actually looked down, when I looked at the car and looked at the rear valance, I thought to myself, look at all that under, what is that hiding? But, look. 40 year old Mini. Now, it has got its problems. So there is a bit of corrosion at the back here. Um, and this this had been, this had glass fiber filler in here. So it's been bodged up, which is not great. But look at that closing panel. I think the rest of the rear of this car, when I start cleaning off that undersill, is gonna be like that. I mean, it is a long, boring job just chipping away at it. And there's part of me that just thinks leave it, but the problem is it's gone brittle, so it flakes off in places. And I would imagine that's what's happened there. The undersill's come off, it's been exposed to just, well, not quite bare metal, but it's corroded there, but that ain't bad at all. Now, underneath the car in general, like I say, the whole lot is covered in this undersill. Am I gonna go along and chip the, I think I've got to, haven't I? I think I've got to. I mean, the rear valance, it looks, I thought to myself, it's just bodged up because someone's laid it in undersill. But now, when I look at it, this lip here is not all swollen up and corroded. I, I actually, like I say, I'm, I'm lost for words a little bit. Now, I'll clean it up some more and, and we'll see. There are some areas that want doing, so the closing panel the other side for the rear valance wants doing. And we know about this bodge here, the rear of the heel board. So look at this, this is what I spotted. This is why we're taking the subframe out because I could see that someone had welded a patch on and folded it up inside. So, it, I mean, what is this? Is this a little note or? Sorry for bodging it. I said, no, it's a bit of gaffer tape. I think that actually covers up the bolt holes in the rear of the subframe. But this is a genuine repair. I've not touched this yet. Oh my God. Someone. <laughs> that was someone's repair. Here we go, here we go, by hand. Oh my good God. So rather than fix it properly, they've just welded, folded it up inside. Now I've got a heel board repair section for at the back here. To be fair, that's looking okay. The heel board repair section comes up to about here. I think we're good. And, and even, it's just that localized bit of rust there. Let's have a look around the other side quickly. So this is what that wheel arch looked like before I started chipping away at all the underseal on there. Like I say, it's just thick. Now, like I say, on the back here, you can see there's a hole there and it's gonna want a closing panel there. But I think apart from some flaky rust on the inside of that rear valance, I think it's okay. The rest you can just see is thick in the underseal. This heel board, I haven't started cleaning it off this side yet, but I'm pretty confident that's gonna be okay. Right, I know some are probably watching this and thinking, why are you chipping all this under seal off if it's so good? The problem is, it has worked fantastically, but it does just, 
it just flakes off now and of course in the areas where it has flaked off over the years that's where you get the corrosion so half of it is I just need to get it off to see what's underneath really uh, but mostly it is very very pleasing to find just nice fresh clean paint and there are localized areas that need repairs So providing you're relatively gentle with the tapping, you can get it off without damaging the paintwork. It is a bit fiddly, just going along tappy tap tap and um, a sharp sort of scraper. And yeah, it scratches the odd bit, but um, it just flakes off. Um, so yeah, like I said before, it hasn't protected it. Oh, I just hope I can get a repair section for this now because that would seem such a shame to re be replacing this whole valance when the rest of it is in pretty good nick. Yeah, there's a bit of rust on the bottom lip, but hey ho. Um, but I notice again round here, so these holes are meant to be here. This is like what we had in the sill. This is a plug they put in when they drill holes to inject wax oil. Now, it's, whoever done this was a bit of a numpty, because like the sill, you don't need to drill a hole to get inside the seals, just go up inside the flutes. Or if you were doing this side and you wanted to get into this cavity here, surely just take that bung out and go through there. Um, or there's plenty of gaps in the closing panel you can go through. Um, and obviously that hasn't fully protected that closing panel because it's going to need replacing. But again, just I, I've got to stop going on now. I'll just get on with it. Let me get it all cleaned up. I'll show you the final result. Right, I've been very busy doing really boring and uh, quite frankly horrible work to clean up all underneath that boot floor. I thought I'd just show you this first. So um, these rear corners are just shot to bits. That's going to want to, uh, yeah, back end of that boot floor, a uh, bit along the bottom of the wheel arch, all the closing panel and that's knackered on the outside as well. And this side, yeah, it's, there's holes here as well, but it's been patched up really badly as well. So that's that first bit. Um, this inner edge of the boot doesn't look too bad. So for starters, you can see I've removed that rear valance, which a little bit frustrating, but when it comes to sorting out that corner there, and on the other side, I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to do that all from inside. I'm gonna to need to get it from underneath, which means I need to get up into the area, get all this closing panel out and that to get to it. So unfortunately, that rear valance, although that wasn't too bad, has had to come off. You can see there where it's corroded and they've just put a patch over it. Um, there's the rear valance itself. But obviously that, that'll be scrapped now, that'll be going in the bin, unfortunately. Um, but the bit that has just been back-breaking, boring. Oh, and I wonder why I started doing it, to be honest. So I've chipped off all of that underbody seal everywhere. It's taken me flipping ages. There's our uh, heel board that needs repair. But, and I'm sure even I'm thinking, why am I doing this? Sometimes I think I make me laugh hard. But if you don't do it, I mean, there's big areas where there was sealer on there, but it's cracked, chipped away a bit, and, and water gets between the surface and it starts to rust it. And as I've said many times, this car's going to a subscriber. I don't want it hiding anything. I want to make sure that 
what I hand over is a good solid car with you know many years of life to go out without having to worry about what might be hiding under a load of under seal so there we go I'll probably sound a little bit depressed don't I <laughs> um, I am actually I've just you get to a point where you've just had enough you want to give up just wish someone else would come along and uh, finish it off for me Obviously that's not going to happen, so I better pull my finger out and keep bashing on with it. So the next job I'm going to do, I think, is I need to, well, all of this, the frustrating bit is this closing panel, this side, is absolutely fine. Uh, but there's rust in the layer above it, so I think this is all just going to have to come out. I need to just have a quick look at some images of the the repair panels you get to see how much to cut but i think this has just got to all be cut out now and i'll probably cut a couple of inches of the boot floor out of the back here because as you can see as you get to the back it's quite rusty uh in places and i've actually where i've taken the sill off i've managed to accidentally slip through so um but thankfully i do have a boot floor or repair section which i got given by one chish Again, thanks, one chish. Right, <clears throat> let me stop moaning and get on with it. Right, bit of a progress update. So again, I've been on this all day today now. Probably spent another eight hours or so on it, and I really don't feel like I've got that far today. I've cut out the closing panels at the back. Obviously, the rear valance is off now, um, and it's just a case of keep cutting back and cutting back and cutting back until I get to good metal. Um, this side is not too bad, I don't think. But this side over here, I'm really worried about, just because there's, there's lots of layers here. Someone's just sort of welded a patch over the top there. And it's got like fiberglass filler over it as well. Uh, and there's still corrosion here. So I think I'm just gonna end up cutting a big bit out there bottom half of the wheel arch again uh yeah it's just we're gathering a big pile of metal again um, 